Rabbi Kaplan? Um, nowadays, you hear sometimes about people that they talk about the psychology of Pete uh, I don't remember who and when and where, but I know that you hear such a thing. And, and sometimes what happens is somebody starts talking psychology. And he uses some Torah words and psukim, some chazal. And, uh, and, and, and that makes it Torah. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan. Yeah. I just have to say a word. I didn't know what you were going to talk about. Right. But there's certain... I'm an astrologer, as some of our people know. I uh, second astrology. Anybody uh, that says... So you're a producer and an astrologer, any, yeah. Anybody that says he does astrology, al piatora, you should know he is a bluffer. Yeah, yeah I hear what you're saying. And Baduk Venusa. That means the same thing. He does a, He says astrology, but what they all talk astrology, and he puts in some Torah also. Just because you put in Torah, that doesn't change the astrology. And don't make a mistake. We're not talking against astrology. We both believe in astrology. I mean, I don't believe in it. I see it. Don't have to believe in it. You just see it. I should believe in Hashem as much as I believe in to see astrology. How it works. Continue. You see, it works. So the same thing is over here. You have to be very careful from superficiality. That people that say things, they use words, and you have to always look, but what is he saying? There's such a thing, and I think it's, it's, it's unique for the English language, that there are so many words you could use for, for one union. Like there's a book, uh, what, how do you pronounce it, a theosaurus? That, uh, that over there you have like many words for the same meaning, oh, and each word is a different nuance. In the Hebrew language, you don't have that so much. Um, and, and you could use all kinds of words and make it sound like it's a deep, meaningful, intellectual. And really, Bishachaka, what did he say already? He said something that you could say it in simple language, but if you would say it in simple language, they would say he's, there's such a thing, it's called the oversimplifying, which is also a nusach that the, those that think themselves intellectuals and upper class use it to, to, to put down a certain thing, which is true. I mean, by us, we know that there's true and there's false. Oversimplification doesn't mean, well, which you have to ask yourself, what category does it go into? Does it go into a category of truth or of false? But oversimplification is, is not, there's nothing wrong with that. Like once I was talking about the Rasheva Brochus, I was talking about Dam Nekav and Nasechalov. The blood that becomes, uh, the Gemara says that the blood that turns into milk, that's where milk comes from. There's a certain person there that he was once my father in law. That he said he knew nothing about Yiddishkeit, but nothing of, and nothing. And uh, so, so the saying is the chassan happened to be me was saying at Vartar about Dam Nekav and Asachalov. So then afterwards, I told him what I said. So he said, that, "Well, that's an oversimplification." But but that's that's mamish without seichel to talk like that because when the Chazal said dam nekav and asechol, they didn't uh, they tell us how they came to that conclusion. They they might have had very uh, complicated uh, experiments that they made in order to come to that, or they might have had very very. Deep 
deep levels of Ruach HaKodesh with which they came to that conclusion. And they just said the conclusion in three and four words, Damne, Kavanah, But just because the Maskana is, is put into four words, so that means that it's oversimplified. Good. You can't really complain because people who come from that part of the world, from California, have a timtum amach and a timtum alev, and, and 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 they don't know how to analyze. <laughs> but not so linear nenu. So I'm saying you can't you can't just talk psychology and put in put Torah into it and say it's psychology. I'll be Torah. And you, but if you want to fool yourself, you can always fool yourself. If you want to fool others, you can do that also. But there are left a few intelligent people that are not going to let themselves be fooled. But I want you to know that when you talk about MS, go straight to the term. And you think about it and you go deep into it. And you do what I call holding up to the light. You can find deep. Where, uh, where did you get that expression, Rabbi Kaplan? Oh, well, I got that expression. It's my own expression. I got that expression because I once saw Rav Yashiv do that. I had this chus to go into Rav Yashiv uh, one time, I think it was, to ask a silent. And it was it was not my own shadow. It was somebody sent a parsha of film from America, and he had a shadow on the parsha. There was a noon that on the bottom the 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 bottom of the noon was a little bit uh, how do you say it? Uh, like uh, like pegima, like ups and downs, rigid, maybe you could say. And it, and it was. It, it, it was a chas that maybe the nun became a gimel, but it was so small, the pegimas in the bottom, that you couldn't, it wasn't clear, it doesn't make, is that enough to make it a gimel? So I brought it to Rabbi Yashif, and it was at night, and he held it up to the light, the light bulb. And even that, he said he can't answer till the daytime, he has to hold it up to daylight. So I came the next day, and he got up from his chair, and he went up to the window, and he held it to the light, and he turned it upside down and looked from all sides. And then he says, eh, if this person can buy new purses, I would say he should. So from there, I got the expression holding it up to the light. I mean, something... You look at it, you look at this noon and you think it's a noon, but when you hold it up to light, you, you can start seeing, seeing something different. And that's where I got that expression from. Now, what I'm saying is that you take chazals and you hold it, you're not looking for it. You're not bringing in any ideas from the outside. You're just looking at the chazal self. You can see deep, deep understandings in kochus and nefesh of a person. That's one thing I want to say. Another thing I want to say on this is that uh, the Sefer Chofetz Chaim is a Sefer on Hilchos Loshen Hora. And it's based on uh, Chazal and Rishonim. But uh, we we look at it, or the world looks at it like a from safer, a safer of of of, uh, of uh, from kind of you want where you of course you it's uh, you must have to keep it, but since the, the world is we all of us are so misalzo in the Easter of lesson horror that we look at it like a from kind now. The Chavetz Chaim tried to make us from. The truth is, the Chavetz Chaim is safer. The very Lomdish is safer. The very Gaonish is safer. And the problem is that those that say to learn Chavetz Chaim, they say learn two halachas a day. But two halachas, that's the halachas, but... The the main part of the Chavetz Chaim is the bottom, the makaras, the sources that he brings. And 
When you learn it with the sources, you have a much, much deeper appreciation for the halachas that he says, and much deeper understanding. But what I want to say tonight is another thing. You have a deeper understanding of kochus hanefesh, of psychology al Peter, the emesis of psychology al Peter. And I was thinking, if somebody would really work on it, you could write a psychology book based on the Chofetz Chaim. You can do that. Somebody said to me, so why don't you do it, really? Okay. Maybe I'll do it. But the meanwhile, I started like last week. I was explaining the whole background of what brought me to this. I started saying a chabur every week in the Kolobayos. This winter's man, Tov Shinayin Zayin. On the Sefer of its time, and I think I came up with the meanwhile with a few times that I said some interesting insight in uh, in this union. I wanted to mention tonight in the psich of the Chavetz Chaim before the Chavetz Chaim gets to the, the halachas, so he brings the list of los essays and the mitzvah, the list of essays that various that a person can come come to with by talking lashon hara. And the mitzvahs he could be over on by talking lashon hara. And that's a subject in itself. It's called the psicha of the Rav But it's it's a, it's a good idea to learn it also, even before you get to a lot to the halachas, because no matter what you learn, it gives you a chizuk in, in being careful from lashon hara. And and here the Rav Tzchayim mentions all the various that can you can come to by talking lashon hara. Now, number five, avera number five, Ose is gaiva. A person that talks lashon hara is over on the issue of being a bal gaiva, and that you learn out from the pasuk. He says, "Isham alachop and tishkach es Hashem elukecha." That's, I think, it's in Parshas Vashchanan. And the Torah says you should be careful not to, or maybe it's in Akiv. Akiv, I think. So, yeah, you shouldn't forget Hashem. Now, that itself, when, you, when you're misburning it, and it's uh, a tremendous thing. Uh, talking, being a Balgaivu, you're over on forgetting Hashem. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about this first of all. Uh, Kilo, we're talking about a person who's always remembering Hashem. He goes on the street, he thinks about Hashem. He, come, he, goes, he, he comes home, he thinks about Hashem. And all of a sudden he says to himself, wow, how great I am. How good I know how to learn so good. I, I know how to do business so good. I know how to find the, find the profit and do things that will make profit. And that, all of a sudden, he forgot Hashem. I mean, he's, 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 he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to sit and learn. You're supposed to work and bring partners. So all of a sudden, and he forgot Hashem. Yeah. But the Torah is teaching us to work for him. You, you see what it means, the way a Yid lives. A Yid lives with Hashem in his mind 24 hours a day. He sees Hashem, it's Shavish Hashem, and the and when he works and when he learns, he learns that dosis and he tries to understand it and he then he does understand it. He says, Oh, thank you, Hashem, for helping me understand the dosis. He opens up a business. My daughter lives in Givatzev and she just opened up a new business. She and her husband a toy store they opened up in their house. It's official. They didn't. They didn't do it uh, with the with the uh, black. Uh, how you say it, the uh, black market. They they made it official with the, uh, registered it the way you're supposed to. And they started she worked selling for a lawyer, toys. What? She used to work for a lawyer, of course. Yeah, but now now she has children. And, See, it's hard for her to go out of the house. 
her husband does different things, but so they start opening up and they they brought uh, a certain amount of things. They okay, Rabbi Kaplan, we're taking a break now. Thank you.